Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In my last video, I reviewed the Kongro Robo CNC. Since the frame of this machine is quite rigid, I would like to upgrade the stock 60 watt spindle to an 800 watt spindle so it can make some aluminum parts. As the 800 watt spindle is much larger than the stock one, I have to redesign the spindle mount. But before that, we have to get some dimensions from the existing mount. I can measure it manually or contact the manufacturer to get the digital file and measure it in Fusion 360 to get a more accurate measurement. I emailed Comgro and they sent me the step file of the stock spindle mount. We can just open the imported file and use the measure tool to get the dimensions. Since the manufacturer used injection molds to make the mount, the material used was ABS. As you can see, they left some hollow area to reduce material on the mount as well as the weight. But since we will 3D print this mount, I will make it a solid body instead of hollow. We can now press the I key for the measure tool. If we want the width of the mount, we can click the surface on the right, then the surface on the left, and we get a distance of 72 millimeters. Then we will click on the bottom surface and the top surface, and the distance is 85 millimeters. The two round holes here are for the bearings of the 12 mm Z-axis linear rod. The standard size should be 15 mm. Let's confirm it by using the measure tool and clicking on the circle. When we select the other circle, it will show two distances. 51 mm is from center to center, while 36 mm is the minimum distance from here to here. Next, we will click on the center circle for the 8mm lead screw, and the diameter is 10mm. We also want to know the distance between the spindle and the top, so we can leave enough clearance for the spindle, and the distance is 31mm. Since the new spindle is taller and larger, I will leave around 35mm for the 800 watt spindle. Next, we will measure the side part that triggers the Z-limit switches. Since the height of the limit switch is 11.5 millimeters, it should also be 11.5 millimeters. We will double check both the top and the bottom, and they are all 11.5 millimeters. Okay, we have all the numbers we need. Let's create a new file and draw the sketch. I will start the sketch on the bottom plane. Since we know that the width of the mount is 72 millimeters, we will draw a rectangle 72 millimeters in width. I will just set the height to 25 millimeters since I want to draw another larger rectangle to hold the new 800 watt spindle, but I don't want to decrease the x-axis travel by increasing the width of the whole mount. I will now draw another center rectangle, let's say 80 by 80 millimeters, and I will set the relation to collinear between these two rectangles. Then draw a circle at the center for the 800 watt spindle. The diameter of the spindle is 52 millimeters. We will just draw exactly 52 millimeters and we will not leave any clearance for now. As you can see, the circle and these two sides of the rectangle are not constrained. As the circle is at the center of the rectangle, we can just give a distance between these two edges and everything is now constrained. Let's go back to the stock spindle file. We also need to make a block at the side to trigger the limit switch. We can measure the height by pressing the I key. Then click on these two surfaces and the distance between them is 15 millimeters. We can measure the distance between these two surfaces, which is 10.5 millimeters. We also need to know the distance between the top edge and the block. So measure the distance between this surface and the top surface, which is 10 millimeters. Let's go back to our sketch Draw a rectangle here, and the size is 15 by 10.5 millimeters. The distance from the top is 10 millimeters. Next, we will draw the first circle for the 8 millimeter lead screw. Use the C key for the circle and move the cursor to hover on the sideline. When the cursor changes from a cross to a triangle, that means that I am at the center of the line. Move it towards the center. When I reach the center, another dotted line will show up so I know I am at the exact center of this rectangle. Enter 10 millimeters as the diameter. Then we will draw two circles for the linear bearings. Press the C key again and move the cursor to the sideline and find the center. Place it roughly around here and the diameter should be 15 millimeters. Do the same to the left side and the diameter is almost 15 millimeters. 
we already know the distance between these two bearings is 51 millimeters. So we can use the D key, select these two circles and enter 51 millimeters. The total length 72 minus 51 is 21. So the distance between the circle and the sideline should be 10.5 millimeters. We can enter the distance for both sides. Also, enter the distance between the center circle and the side. In order to make all three circles fully constrained, we will enter the distance between them and the bottom line. Okay, the sketch is now fully constrained. We didn't leave any clearance for the spindle as we wanted it to fit tightly. In this case, we do need to leave a gap so we can expand this gap a little bit and push the spindle in. I will leave the gap on the right instead of the left. Use the center rectangle tool, draw a rectangle here. We can roughly put some dimensions, let's say three millimeters by 40 millimeters. We will then use the trim tool to remove the unwanted lines. When removing the lines, it shows some constraints were also removed, but that's fine. We will add it back by using the D key. The gap is three millimeters and it's 38.5 millimeters away from the top. Now the sketch is complete and fully constrained. We can click finish sketch and extrude the body. Let's go back to measure how tall the original mount is. Use the measure tool to select the top and bottom surface. The height is 34.4 millimeters. Since the 800 watt spindle is taller, we actually want to increase the height of the mount, but we don't want to increase it too much as this will decrease the Z axis travel height. As I'm going to use some longer bearings for the new mount, the bearings I bought are 45 millimeters tall. So I will also make the new mount the same height as the bearings, enter 45 millimeters. Next, we will extrude the block on the side to trigger the limit switches. Go to the browser and show the sketch, select the block on the side, and as we want to extrude it starting from the middle, it's 11.5 millimeters away from the bottom. Select start from offset, enter 11.5, and the distance will be the total height of the mount, which is 45 millimeters, minus 11.5 for the bottom, and minus 11.5 for the top. So the distance we need to extrude is 22 millimeters. Let's hide the sketch and check the distance. It's 11.5 millimeters from the top, and 11.5 millimeters from the bottom. Next, we will make some room for the lead screw nut. Let's go back to the original model and get some measurements. This area was formed by three circles with different extruded depths. We already have the 10 millimeter circle for the lead screw. We also need this 12.5 millimeter circle and finally a 19.5 millimeter circle. Let's go back to our new mount and show the sketch. We can add them to the existing sketch, select edit sketch, and we need to add a 12.5 millimeter circle. Add another 19.5 millimeter circle, go back to the original mount, and we also need two straight lines. We will measure the distance between them. It's 10.2 millimeters. Go back to our new mount, draw a center rectangle. The height is the same as the existing rectangle, which is 25 millimeters, and the width should be 10.2 millimeters. Okay, we will rotate to the bottom of the mount and use these lines to cut into the body. First, the 19.5 millimeter circle is eight millimeters in depth. Select these two faces and enter eight millimeters. The 12.5 millimeter circle is 17 millimeters in depth. Select these three surfaces and enter 17 millimeters. Okay, this should be good for the lead screw nut. Let's go back to the stock spindle. We need to make some holes for the screws and nuts to secure the spindle. There is only one hole on the stock mount. We need two holes on the new mount as the spindle is larger and heavier. Let's go back to our new mount. We will draw a new sketch on the front surface. Since I will use M6 screws to secure the spindle, I will draw a 6.5 millimeter hole to provide enough clearance. The diameter of the head of the screw is 9.8 millimeters. I will draw another 10 millimeter hole. For the nut, the shorter side is 9.8 millimeters, so I will enter 10 millimeters and leave 0.2 as clearance. For the longer side, it's about 11.12 millimeters, so I will enter 11.25, so we can fix the nut without having room to let it move around. I will draw another rectangle and extend it to the side so we can cut it out from the side and insert the nut. Finally, enter some dimensions to fully constrain the sketch. Okay. 
we can press Finish Sketch and select the part we need to extrude. First, I want to extrude the hole for the screw. I'm using 60mm long M6 screws, so negative 75mm should be good enough. Go to the browser to show the sketch again. Next, I will extrude the space for the screw head. It's around 6.25mm. I will extrude negative 10mm. For the nut, we have to extrude it around here, so we need to change the start from profile plane to offset. Let's try negative 50 millimeters and negative 10 millimeters as the distance. The position looks fine. As the nut is around 4.9 millimeters, I will change it to negative 5 millimeters. Okay, the first screw hole is done. It looks fine. For the second screw hole, we can just use the mirror tool to duplicate one. In order to use the mirror tool, we need to create a plane right at the middle of two screw holes as the mirror. Select Construct, and we want to create a mid-plane. We want to place the plane between the top surface and the bottom surface. Okay, you can see a new plane is created in the middle. We can use this as our mirror to duplicate the screw hole. Use the S key to bring up the search tool and search for mirror. We want to mirror features. The features we need to select are these three extruded parts. The mirror plane will be the mid plane we just created. And we want to make them identical. Press OK and Fusion mirror the exact features we selected. The mount is basically done. As the edges are sharp, I will add some fillets to make it look nicer. For these edges, I will enter a 20mm fillet, but for the back, if I enter 20, it will be too much as these areas are too thin and they may break, so I will just enter 5mm instead. Finally, the limit switch trigger looks weird. I will draw a rectangle so we can select this part. Use the Extrude tool to cut it out. Then, add a fillet to these two edges. 5mm may be too much, so let's try 2mm. I think 3mm is perfect. Okay, the mount is now ready for 3D printing. I will save it in STL format and send it to the printer. I will install the 800W spindle to the Congo Robo CNC in my next video. I will put it inside the CNC playlist of my channel, so if you are interested in seeing how it works, please check out my channel next week. Today is Halloween, so I will go outside and have some fun now. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week!